Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. What is the biggest training mistake you could make? In the words of Mike Mensah, In fact, going from one set to two sets is the biggest mistake you could possibly make. It's not just a mistake, it's the biggest mistake possible. You just doubled the exercise and therefore you doubled the inroad into recovery ability. With these Mensa clips, you often get some intriguing comments such as this. As humans, we are designed to empty the tank through one set, one sprint, one hunt, one fight. Arthur Jones, who's often credited for popularizing HIIT training, has said, how many sets of the exercise? One, additional sets usually serve no purpose and may produce a state of overtraining with some subjects. An intriguing comment left on this channel states, one set to failure dummies, other than that you're overtraining. These are certainly some interesting and controversial comments, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to overview the scientific literature on overtraining, fatigue, and set numbers in a way that we haven't really done previously at the House of Hypertrophy. Let's dive in. The talk of fatigue and overtraining is interesting, so let us start there. Does the fatigue from a higher number of sets spiral you into overtraining? There are different ways you may define overtraining, but this 2013 consensus provides us with this definition, a decrease in performance with or without symptoms lasting months or longer with no following performance gains. There are extremes on either side, with some believing overtraining is a myth and others, as we've just seen, thinking overtraining occurs from anything more than lower volume volumes of training. Considering non-functional overreaching, which is defined as a performance decrease lasting weeks or months with no following performance gains, is also worthwhile. Both of these can occur from resistance training, but getting there seems to be incredibly difficult. Illustrating this, this analysis examined 22 studies that deliberately tried to induce overtraining or overreaching from resistance training, and 10 studies failed to find any meaningful fatigue that would be classed as overtraining or non-functional overreaching. Thus, even in studies purposefully constructed to produce overtraining or overreaching, it doesn't always happen. For instance, this paper employed this training program, involving largely training the full body 5 days a week with just 24 hours hours of rest between sessions, plus maximum strength tests on Friday. Bench press and squat strength performance did decrease in the second week, but they rebounded and performance actually improved over time. So neither overtraining nor non-functional overreaching occurred, rather performance improved. This research demonstrates that the notion that you're going to overtrain from performing more than one set is, to put it bluntly, ludicrous. To be fair, I'm not sure if Jones or the commenter considered overtraining as the definition we provided, but even still, although more sets will generate more fatigue, this certainly does not mean your body can't handle, adapt, and still grow from it. Multiple areas of the literature lead me to conclude this. This paper had trained folks perform a six sets all to actual momentary failure on the barbell bench press. Yet, a marker of neuromuscular fatigue was virtually fully recovered 48 hours after training. To be fair, this is just one fatigue marker in one paper. But importantly, as you continue to accustom yourself to a training program across weeks, your body produces a range of adaptations that only further enhance your recovery capability Demonstrating this, these researchers had subjects perform 5 sets of 15 maximal eccentric contractions. The fatigue of maximal eccentric contractions should not be underestimated. After the first session, subjects saw substantial soreness, damage and fatigue for at least 5 days after. But as subjects kept training across 10 weeks, recovery improved. By the 10th week, subjects were seeing virtually no soreness or damage and they virtually fully recovered their strength 24 hours after the session. And don't forget, this was with 5 sets of maximal eccentric work. The literature on how many times per week you should train a muscle ties in here. On average, when the total number of sets you perform each week for a muscle is kept the same, the number of times per week you train that muscle doesn't matter too much for hypertrophy. This means that higher frequency training, where you're training a muscle 24 hours apart regularly, is a viable option on the table. As an example, this study had trained subjects train the squat and bench press each with 12 sets in a week. A 3 times group spread this volume across 3 sessions a week, while a 6 times group spread this volume across 6 sessions per week. This meant the 6 times group was performing 2 sets per session and just resting 24 hours between sessions. Despite this, fat-free mass gains and strength gains were comparable between both groups. In fact, the fat-free mass gains somewhat leaned towards the 6 times group. 
Interestingly, there are some limited cases of higher frequency training being superior to lower frequencies, such as this paper which had trained folks perform 15 weekly sets for each muscle. A low frequency group trained each muscle once or twice per week, while a high frequency group trained each muscle across 5 days a week. This means they would have regularly just had 24 hours to recover between sessions, and multiple sets per muscle were performed each session. Back squat strength gains were greater for the higher frequency, while other strength gains were similar, muscle growth was overall better with a higher frequency. This does not mean higher frequency training is undeniably the best, or that you have to train this way even if you don't want to, because as deciphered in other videos, the overall entirety of the evidence suggests you certainly can make great gains by training a muscle once, twice or three times per week. Individual differences can also exist. Due to multiple factors, some people may fail to handle higher frequency training. Nevertheless, the main point I'm trying to show here is that if the fatigue from multiple sets was problematic, higher frequency training should never ever be an option, but we see it is. What about the main thing, muscle hypertrophy? I'm actually going to start with this paper that I've never detailed before at the House of Hypertrophy. 70 previously untrained individuals trained their quads with these exercises for 3 sets each, 3 times a week for 16 weeks. This actually totals to 27 weekly sets performed for the quads, which is quite a lot. But, both the younger and older individuals grew well in these 16 weeks. After this, the subjects were divided into one of three groups for the next 32 weeks. A detraining group stopped training altogether, and as you can imagine, they lost their gains. A one-third group continued to train but cut their volume down by one-third, by still training each exercise for three sets but just once a week. A one-ninth group also continued to train but cut their volume down by one-ninth by training each exercise for one set once per week. Quite interestingly, the older adults in both groups didn't make further gains, they actually lost some size. As for the younger adults, the one-third condition did lead to some gains, but with the one-ninth group, they largely just maintained their muscle size. If higher sets were problematic, and if lower sets were unfailingly the best for hypertrophy in all circumstances, these results should not have occurred. On the flip side, we have research suggesting you grow just fine if not maybe even better when you perform more sets than usual. For example, this paper had trained individuals perform the unilateral leg extension and leg press. With one leg, all subjects performed 22 weekly sets for the quads. With their other leg, all subjects performed 20% more weekly sets than what they'd been performing before the study. Vastus lateralis hypertrophy was better with a leg that performed 20% more sets than usual. Another study had subjects train their lower body with a range of set numbers and found on average, the subjects that experienced the best gains had increased their sets by the most compared to what they'd usually perform before the study. More studies are definitely required to understand if, when and how much you should increase set numbers across your training career, but this research at least further demonstrates how more sets aren't inherently detrimental. All this research involved changing set numbers, but what about data just comparing higher to lower sets? We have this paper with trained folks performing leg extensions with either one or three sets. My fibular protein synthesis, which is the creation of the proteins that make your muscles bigger, was greater and longer lasting for the three sets. Now, protein synthesis data can be clouded by muscle damage, but as these subjects were trained and merely performed the leg extension, I don't anticipate muscle damage being a major confounder. Nevertheless, we of course have research actually measuring hypertrophy. You can indeed find some papers failing to find a significant difference in muscle hypertrophy between training with either one or three sets per exercise, but it is equally true that other papers find three sets per exercise built more muscle than one set. Importantly, when we statistically combine all the individual papers into a meta-analysis, multiple sets overall result in greater hypertrophy. More precisely, performing a total of 9 or more weekly sets per muscle group produced greater hypertrophy than performing fewer than 9 weekly sets per muscle. A lot of this data was from untrained individuals. When analyzing the data on trained individuals, the most well-designed data tends to indicate that 12 to 18 weekly sets for a muscle group produced better gains than fewer sets. This is an average, and some individuals and muscles could see better gains with fewer or more sets.
Fascinatingly, we had this recent study that found progressing up to an incredibly high 42 to 52 weekly sets for the quads led to greater quad hypertrophy than performing 22 weekly sets. Now, there are nuances and considerations to this paper, which we've more thoroughly outlined in a previous video, but it nonetheless demonstrates how anything more than lower sets isn't detrimental. It is worth noting in all the studies outlined here, the instructions and rep number data provided in the papers indicates they were training two or very close to failure on the sets, which is perfectly fine since as detailed in another video, stopping three to two reps from failure is likely comparably effective to training to failure. If you're searching for further guidance about training, our high quality partner, the Alpha Progression app can help you create track and evolve your hypertrophy and strength training. A custom workout generator can tailor make an evidence-based program to your needs in less than two minutes. Let it know the equipment you have, how often and how long you want to train for, whether you want to focus or neglect certain muscles. With the touch of a few buttons, you can edit things more to your liking, such as changing set numbers if that's what you'd like to do. The app generates graphs that can track your progress, thereby saving you time. During workouts, it analyzes your past performance to provide progressive overload recommendations to help you continue making gains. There's also a massive exercise database with video and text tutorials on each movement. Try the app free for two weeks with a link in the comments and description. And if you like it and decide to go beyond, the link gives you 20% off a subscription. The reviews speak to the app's unmatched quality. By no means is it my intention to hate on Mensa or Jones. The truth is they didn't have access to the research we have now. But I will say it is a little questionable of them to have been making seemingly firm conclusions in the absence of any strong data. Nevertheless, by no means is it my intention to also say that training with lower sets is a crime. We know the research indicates it can produce gains, and it may fit people's goals and lifestyles better, which is absolutely fine. But the notion that lower sets are superior in all circumstances and that the fatigue from higher sets leads to overtraining and inferior results isn't supported by the scientific literature. Thank you for watching. Feel free to check out the Alpha Progression app or our recent deep dive into building the lats.